Are the new weapons in the Polar Patriots good enough to bring to the battlefield, or should we leave them on the shelf to collect dust? After playing a few rounds with each weapon, I have my answer. Feel free to share your answer and your thoughts about this war bond in the comments. Let's start with the AR-61 Tenderizer. The main appeal of this gun is the low recoil and great accuracy. You can just hold down the trigger and it will shoot straight at the target, but other ARs might start flying all over the place. Against bots, this gun handles well, allowing you to click heads to get kills. However, the light armor penetration makes it fall behind other options like the BR-14 Adjudicator. You can sidestep that gun's recoil issue with trigger control by not having your bullets bounce off medium threat targets. While usable against the bugs, unlike another gun in this war bond, it is outclassed by weapons with stronger traits like explosions with the plasma pump or concussive rounds with the SMG-72 Pummeler. In fact, let's talk about the SMG-72 Pummeler. The DPS for this gun is lower compared to its SMG counterparts, but the utility that comes from the concussive rounds is where this gun shines. When an ally is in a pinch, those concussive rounds can give them enough time to run and fight again. Also, stun locking a threat is very satisfying. When it comes to the bots, pairing it with a ballistic shield makes for a fun playstyle, one that I want to experiment more with and cover in another video. While this may be the better gun in the war bond, due to low damage output and more defense offensive playstyle, I don't think it's going to replace the primary slot for most Helldivers. The Plaz 101 Purifier is a disappointment. Now I admit, I had the wrong expectation with this gun coming into it, and that is on me. I thought that with no charge, the gun would shoot a bolt like the Scorcher, but with no explosion. But when fully charged, it would shoot a blast like the Plasma Punisher. Mega Man Blaster Logic. Well, I was wrong. You have to charge up fully to shoot. Now, judging what the gun is, and not what I wanted it to be, I still wouldn't bring this for most missions. In fact, against the bugs, I got so frustrated with it, I opted for my sidearm, and later grabbed the gun off a fallen diver. Against the bots, it fared better, but I don't see myself choosing this over the plasma alternatives or the eruptor. Also, when you land a hit, it seems like the enemy is more annoyed than damaged. Now, the P113 Verdict is a decent addition. It can clean up smaller enemies and carried me through when the purifier could not. It has a decent amount of ammo and is easy to control. I think it's a decent side art option, but mostly comes up short when stacked up against the medium penetration, quick reload, and firepower of the Senator. Speaking of fire power, I found the G13 Incendiary Impact to be fun to use, though not as dependable as a G16 Impact. Wherever there was a bug breach or a bot drop, I would just toss it there and watch them burn. It worked well on the smallest enemies, and when paired with a gun that shoots concussive rounds, you can stun lock a larger enemy in the fire. Efficient? No. Satisfying? Yes. This grenade is a fun way to spice up the gameplay, but is more of a novelty than a must-have. This war bond's a strange one. The new weapons are outclassed by the older options. Of course, that may change with future patches, buffs, and nerfs, but for now, my loadout's staying the same. 